okay, maybe he's not like fully back. He's not undisputably Norris best defenseman in the league anymore back, but at the very least, I feel like there is a resurgence happening in San Jose, and this is the kind of thing that I think everybody in the NHL, all fans, all media, all players, going out there and seeing what's happening, they're all going to be pleased. Unless your name is Matt Cook, maybe? Uh, I don't know. Let's talk today about San Jose Sharks defenseman Eric Carlson, a guy who was once the best defenseman in the league and arguably a top three player in the league at the time. You talk about all the stuff that people talk about with Kale McCarr. Oh, he is this, he is that, he's in the top tier of NHL players. It's McDavid, and then it's McCarr, and then it's Matthews, or whoever it is. When you talk about guys like Kale McCarr, especially on defense, Eric Carlson used to be the guy who would headline that type of discourse. Now, back when Carlson was doing these things, Kale McCarr was still a prospect, so it wasn't really in that same level, but... Whenever we talk about Eric Carlson, and it's been like this for the past few years now, we always have to say, oh, the guy's contract is terrible, the guy used to be really good, but then injury slowed him down. Sure, he's still serviceable, but there was never really that same spark, that same electricity, the same offensive capability that was showcased in Eric Carlson's time in San Jose up until now. Because if you go over to the San Jose Sharks and you see what exactly their standing is right now in the Pacific Division, you'll see that they are still in a pretty unfavorable spot. I mean, they're second last in the Pacific. They've got six points in 11 games played. But if you go over to who is leading this team in scoring, boy, oh boy, it gets really nice. Because fifth overall on the team in points is a pretty big tie. It's Nico Sturm, Timo Meyer, and Luke Cunnan. They each have five points in 11 games played. Tomas Hurdle is third on the team in points with six points in 11 games. Logan Couture has seven points and then number one on the team with 11 points in 11 games played is Eric freaking Carlson. And in fact, if you go over to the NHL in its entirety, you could see that Carlson and Dahlin are the two guys leading the charts of defensemen scoring in general. Carlson is number one with his 11 points in 11 games and Dahlin is number two with 10 points in eight games. So, yeah, darlene has been really good, not to mention Adam Fox, Justin Falk, Goss to spare all right there following in behind, but Eric Carlson has been a beast, and when it comes to the way that he's getting these points, not only has Eric Carlson had some highlight reel plays, especially in overtime, but you're really starting to see the swagger and a lot of the competence bring itself out in his play in ways that we haven't seen in years. There was an overtime goal that he scored against the New York Rangers where he dangles by pretty much the entire team and then he kicks the puck up back to his stick while falling down. He then makes a pass while he's on the ice. Timo Meyer fails to score and then Meyer wraps it back in front for Carlson to put the biscuit in the basket. And then you had yourselves the overtime goal that Carlson scored against Toronto as well where he looks behind him, he notices that John Tavares is the guy chasing him down in the breakaway, and so he realizes, hey, Tavares is slow as heck. I'm gonna go in and just absolutely make a fool out of this Toronto goaltender, and that's what he did. He roofed it upstairs, and Carlson has never really looked back on the past few seasons ever since 22-23 began. The guy has been putting up points, he's been looking phenomenal while putting up these points, and he leads the NHL in D-men scoring, a feat that he hadn't done since when was the last time he had led the league in defenseman points? Was it 2016 or 2017? One of those two. I mean, Eric Carlson used to be a consistent 70, 60 point defender. He reached 82 points in 82 games played in 2015-16 with the Sens before being a point per game defenseman the next season and then taking them to the third round. Eric Carlson back in this time frame was undisputably one of the best defensemen ever. Purely just offensive talent pizzazz, just the mobility, the elusiveness, the creativity on the ice. I cannot use any more adjectives to describe to newer hockey fans that are just tuning into the sport. Now, two, three years ago, how good Eric Carlson was in his prime. 
There's a reason why he's making $11.5 million a season till the end of 2027. And because his play has actually taken such a step up over the past few weeks, we've had a few NHL insiders going on to the radio and onto television talking about Eric Carlson as an actual potential trade ship, as long as the Sharks are able to retain some salary because $11.5 million, it's still quite a lot. But the thing is, he's making 11.5 because of the resume he had had so long ago with what he had been doing in Ottawa. Carlson was undisputably one of the best defensemen ever in his prime, and unfortunately we all got robbed of that. Everybody, me, you, fans, media, he himself, everybody got robbed due to the injuries and the surgeries that Eric Carlson had to go under. He was never the same defenseman again, even nowadays. I know I've been waxing poetic about how good he's been the entire season, but there still is that sort of loss of turnstile ability. I don't think that's the proper term that I'm looking for here, but you could definitely see when watching Eric Carlson tape from back then to watching Eric Carlson tape from even let's say, the past few games. You could still see that his lateral mobility, his agility, and rotation stride is not as good as it had been before, but he is still as talented as ever when it comes to putting points up on the board. Who knows what it is? Maybe it's the fact that he's had a few more seasons to acclimate himself in San Jose. Maybe it's the idea that the Sharks are a bad team. They're trying to go out there and tank. They had lost the first few games before any other NHL team played against Nashville when they were overseas. Maybe it's a lack of pressure Maybe it's just the ability to let go and have fun and feel free. Maybe it's the idea that Brent Burns, another one of the top defensemen in the NHL when it comes to points and just being an overall stud the past few years, got traded from San Jose earlier in this offseason. Here's a comment on the R Hockey subreddit from a user by the name of, what is it? Massive Beat Drop. This is on a thread published by Mark Mathot, talking about Eric Carlson and some pretty good things about him. The comment is in reply to another thought made by Notorious VK. This first commenter says that Eric Carlson has been the Sharks' best player by far, and it makes you wonder if splitting time as top D-man with Burns was hurting rather than helping. Although Carlson finally looks completely healthy, judging by his skating and his performance, it's all speculation on my end. Massive Beat Drop, a Sharks fan, then says this, I've been thinking this since Carlson's first season with us. Time on ice reductions aside, seeing the two of them playing together on the power play made you feel like they were being too careful not to steal each other's thunder to the detriment of the play. You'd hear the frustration from our color commentator all the time about Carlson giving up what seemed like a good look in favor of trying to force a pass to Burns or whoever else. As a side note, Mark Edward Vlasic's bump in time on ice seems to improve his game too. Maybe some players really do need that heavier workload to stay engaged. And this is another one of the things here. Brent Burns was so good in this same period when Eric Carlson was dominating the league that when the Sens sent Carlson over to San Jose, a lot of people, myself included, said, hey, Carlson and Burns being on the same team? This is going to be phenomenal. Like, if you think about it in today's terms, I'd say that if you think of Kale McCarr and Adam Fox sort of getting traded to the same team, that's what Carlson and Burns was like. Now, I know it was four years ago, but then again, there are some people that do watch this YouTube channel that are on the younger side, so some of you might not be all too familiar with just the idea floating around that Carlson and Burns would be on the same power play. But when you acknowledge they're both right-shot defensemen, they both were used to being top guys on their teams, it was interesting to see that clash in the dynamics there. And you could definitely argue that, hey, now that Burns is gone, maybe it's easier for Eric Carlson to take over and just be the guy that he was before, which was an undisputed, no-strings-attached, no-questions-asked number one D-man. Because, hey, he's really playing like it. In fact, having him and Darlene as number one and number two in points is kind of poetic in a way. Because even when Darlene was drafted, I remember Eric Carlson had a quote saying that, yeah, no, Darlene was way better than I was when I was his age, so yeah, he's a pretty good player. And a lot of people kind of said, oh, Darlene could be the next Eric Carlson. And now it seems like the torch is being passed or it's in the process of being passed in the form of the defenseman scoring race in the moment. But either way, talk to the comments about your thoughts about Eric Carlson and the fantastic resurgence, the rejuvenation of his career. Sure, he's probably not worth 11.5. Then again, it's very few and far between to have players that actually are worth that number. But 
at the end of the day, for Eric Carlson, you'd rather see him at the top of the NHL defense on point scoring race than not. Sharks fans, what are your thoughts on this? Senators fans, let me know as well what you think. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishaj Rolls 99. And bye.